All right, the final chum fry pattern that I'm going to be tying here. Um, it's just a little, uh, I don't have a name for it. Uh, it's just a basic sort of epoxy headed bait fish style pattern. Um, tied on a size 6 Gamagatsu SC15. That uh, It's tied extremely sparse and it's tied using uh, Senyo Predator Wrap. Um, if you haven't used this stuff yet, it's pretty neat stuff. It's a uh, uh, it's a synthetic material, um, comes in a whole array of colors, and uh, I'm just, this last year or so, sort of diving into all that I can do with it. Um, I really like it for this style of bait fish patterns. It's, these colors that I have are all barred, um, which is, I think is, is a good thing for saltwater flies around here. I'm going to be tying this one with the uh, olive and black barred Senyo Predator Wrap. I don't know how well you can see that, but it's a... Comes within these cards with the the materials attached to a piece of you know string here, and you just cut off what you want. It's about oh four inches in length, three and a half four inches in length. Uh, anyway, it's really neat stuff. Uh, I highly recommend picking some up and trying to see what you can come up with with it. Uh, I use it a lot for these style of flies, and it's just I just like the way it looks. This is a real basic pattern. Um, I haven't tied one of these in about a year, so you're gonna have to bear with me. Uh, the, the, the epoxy in, in it is, is the only semi-difficult part. So, uh, start with, I'm gonna just got some olive six aught uni thread, laying down a little thread base. I'm not going back very far with my thread base because uh, most of the, you know, the, the materials are tied in at the front of the hook in this style of fly. Uh, there's no need to kind of work it all the way back. First up, I'm just going to take a few strands of white bucktail. And when I say a few strands, I mean a few strands. Uh, and really, the only reason that I use this, uh, I like to have a little bit of white. Somebody is blowing up my phone. I like to have a little bit of white underneath to sort of represent a belly but also the little bit stiffer bucktail below the, the the predator wrap seems to help prevent fouling issues um, with this style of fly if you end up tying it a little too long it can often uh, the materials especially a limper material will uh, while in the water under retrieve can get kind of wrapped up around the hook and fouled up so uh, we don't want that so I'm using like not very much bucktail here. It's just a very, very little bit, you know. It's like probably eight or ten little hairs, that's it. It's okay if it looks kind of wanky because I'm going to be covering it up anyway. And then I'm going to be adding some this Senyo Predator Wrap. Uh, just gonna cut off a chunk. Again, I'm trying to keep this fly nice and sparse, so I'm gonna thin out this chunk that I just cut. Another thing I really like about this material is it, unlike a lot of synthetics, uh, the ends are, are semi-tapered. Um, it's not all just cut square, which I think it's really important for flies. I don't like flies that have a squared off look to them at the tail and it just kind of looks goofy to me. So that's why I've always been a big fan of bucktail because it has that natural taper. Um, and this predator wrap kind of does too. I don't know if you can see that, but it's kind of, you know, the ends are shorter, longer. And I like that. So I'm going to have tell you in this next right on top and I'm gonna make it just slightly longer than the bucktail not much uh, just a little bit longer that tied in good and then I'm sort of just building up a little bit of a head here where I'm gonna attach some stick-on eyeballs and you want to have a little bit of surface area to 
to actually uh, get those things to attach. I'm not going to go too crazy, but mm, that's good enough. Okay, at this point I'm going to whip finish this because I'm going to be using some uh, stick-on eyes and some uh, UV resin to uh, build up a little bit of a head. And this is really the only semi-difficult part and with my fat fingers. It's one that I can sometimes struggle with. Um, I'm using these little I don't know what they are, one eighth inch maybe, <clears throat> just red eyeballs. I long ago got rid of the package, so I don't actually know what these are, otherwise I would tell you. And you just got to kind of stick them on there as best you can. They don't, they're not super adhesive, so they like to move around, and uh, you just kind of got to play with it a little bit and get it about where you want it. Now for the resin, I'm using uh, Clear Cure Goo Thin. Um, honestly, this probably isn't the best stuff on the market. There's, there's newer products that are a lot better. Um, one thing about this stuff is that it, it doesn't dry. It, when it dries, it still remains tacky. And uh, so I, I have to go over it with a... I've been using the Clear Cure Goo Hydro. And I'm just going to... Put a little dollop of this with a toothpick and I'm just trying to get enough because I want to uh, I want to get the eyes secured first. That's my biggest concern and then I'll worry about kind of shaping everything. And as far as the consistency goes, I, I actually really enjoy this Clear Cure Thin. I just uh, I hate having to go over it with another product to make it, you know, so it just comes out tack free. That's kind of hokey if you ask me. So, I'm using a toothpick here just to kind of, I don't want to have a huge bulkiness here. I, I just want a nice little rounded shaped head. doesn't have to be perfect. The biggest thing is, is getting it enough in there that I can secure these eyeballs and then I can... This light that I'm using has seen better days as well. It's the original clear cure light that came with the kit and like I said since this stuff came on the market however many years ago there's been a bunch of improvements and um, my buddy was just telling me about the there's some new Loon UV cure that he said is just fantastic. Um, I just haven't had a chance to use it yet because I've got quite a bit of this still on hand. So when I run out of this, I plan to uh, give some of the other stuff uh, a try. There's a uh, we're on Washington fly fishing. There's a member there, but that goes by Silver Creek. That uh, he sells his own brand of UV resin and a lot of my buddies use it. Um, in fact, one of my real good friends, Ira, brought some to my house one night and uh, I played around with it. And it's really great stuff. Um, it's pretty inexpensive. Uh, you can buy it from him directly on that forum there. Great stuff, but uh, since I tie a lot of bigger saltwater flies uh, for rockfish and ling cod and things where I use epoxy heads and um, I like the thicker material that, that the clear cure goo has but uh, it seems some of the other ones are coming out with thick stuff too so there's really no need for me to you can see that even after I've popped it with the light a bunch it okay now that I've got those eyes kinda on there I can add a little bit more of this stuff I like to just sorta put some blob on there and then I'll take a toothpick and sort of shape it all out the way I want it. Where'd my toothpick go? 
And don't be afraid to kind of run some of this stuff up the body a little bit. That will just, all that will do is help prevent fouling if you can stiffen the body, you know, right around through here. And you can spend, you know, as much time and energy as you want shaping these heads and, and making them look just absolutely perfect. If you haven't figured out by now, that's not me. I just want this to be... The main thing is to protect these eyes so they don't just get shredded and give it a little bit of a, a head, you know. Um, I think I'm just going to run a little bit more up the body. Almost almost like a surf candy. And all that will do is just keep, you know, it'll stiffen that part right up right there and it'll help prevent fouling, which anything I can do to prevent fouling is a good thing. right there that I don't like. You can see it's a little bit time consuming. Not that big a deal. This is looking pretty decent I think. I think I'm gonna go on ahead and shoot that. And You don't want to build up too big of a head, you know, and then it looks kind of goofy. I'm shooting this a little bit longer than most people would need to because my light is. It probably needs fresh batteries, but this light is about, I don't know, five years old or something, and it's definitely lost something along the way, so. One of these days I need to stop being cheap and get something new. Okay. That's pretty good. Now, I'm just going to put a quick little coat of, uh, oh, almost spilled it. Clear Cure Hydro, which is their tack-free whatever. Again, it's kind of kind of silly that I have to use two different products to achieve this, but it was better than investing in a whole bunch of new stuff at the time. So, and I really like the Hydro. It actually it's it does cure up nice and tack-free. Um, it's just so much thinner that it's not really suited for uh, making a, eyes and bodies and things out of epoxy. So, anyway, this is about it. It's a, again a real simple, sparse pattern, but uh, it's produced very well for me when the chum fry are around. Uh, it's fun to tie. I like I like tying with epoxy or the UV resin. I think it's just a nice change of pace from the standard, you know, chum babies and clousers and things that I usually fish. So, uh, you know, maybe uh, give this one a shot and add it to your box. Uh, it might pay off for you. Uh, thank you for watching, and uh, see you next time.